Yo, 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 what it do now? Just a babe, you already know, man. Here we is, another one, yes, two for one special. Had to give y'all that double dose. But today, I had another thought that I wanted to talk about with y'all. So, I've been kind of wondering, like, why is there this disconnect? Like, it's just continuing to grow. Politics have become more and more polarizing, right? Like, why is there this left and right disconnect that keeps getting farther and farther and farther and farther? What is it? And then I started thinking, like, maybe, maybe politics aren't really about politics. And it sounds so simple, like, well, I guess, yeah, you're right. But what do you mean? I'm gonna tell you. What I really, really mean is that politics actually kind of breaks down more into a sociological phenomenon, into a psychological phenomenon, into an economic phenomenon, and into a spiritual phenomenon. And I don't even know why I kept saying phenomenon. It just felt good to keep saying that word. But those are the things that I'm starting to realize because politics affect all of those. And when those are affected, you make decisions differently and you see the world differently. So your reality is different than other people who might right? So you see where it's starting to connect. So I started to think about this and I was like, okay, so economically it's very, very hard. That's why we have a class divide, right? So that's why we have the 1% and that's why we have the 99. And we think about it like that, but we have all kinds of other different classes. You know, we have pockets of people who are doing well, doing good, doing decent, could be better. It's horrible. Bro, it's like Iraq, right? So there's different pockets. There are different brackets. There's different places that it comes to when it comes to economic. Not just socioeconomic, but actual economics. And I think that when that plays a factor into how much money is in your pocket, how much you're spending at the grocery store or at the gas station and things like that, that tends to truly affect who you're going to put in office because you think that they might make your life better. But you're looking at it from your own personal perspective and you start to see, hey, my situation isn't good, so I need to make it better. That's why I'm voting for this person. But the person down the street who's like, yo, my situation is actually pretty decent. I don't need shit changed. I'm voting for... It's a disconnect, and it's always going to be there. But it goes deeper than that, because when we go to the next level, sociologically, when we look at the way that we interact with our environment, the way that we talk to people, the way that we communicate with you know just everything around us, that tends to also play into how we, uh, you know, how we, how we choose the politicians and how we involve ourselves in the politics or how we engage ourselves in the political thoughts that we have. And I look at it from a perspective of like, on the sociological level, a lot of us that are considered woke, and I saw Howard Stern talking about this not that long ago, woke, which is really just aware to the injustices around you, so pay attention and make sure that you can do something about it. But most of us that are woke sociologically tend to be on the left. And those that tend to think that wokeness is an issue sociologically tend to be on the right. And there's a disconnect because the word woke means two different things. To them, it means a social justice warrior who's going to tell you, man, white people suck. White people are trash. White people ain't shit. And then you got the people on the left that are going to be like, man, white people are racist. You see, they're saying the same thing, but at the same time, neither one of them are right. Right. Because they're looking at it from their skewed sociological perspective and the way that the political parties that they're aligned with push out the narratives. The Democratic Party does talk a lot about how white people are a certain way or how white you know, politicians are this way or the, the systems are flawed and stuff like that. And a lot of that is true when it comes to the systems being flawed and that white power structures are in charge of those systems. So sociologically, they are going to be defenders and champions of people who believe that, whereas the conservatives or the right, and they're going to be like, no, that's not what's happening. America is not racist. It's not built on those racist institutions. We have freedom and liberty for all. And you can see there is a divide Divide and a different reality that people are living in. Now, let's go even deeper when it goes to the spiritual realm, right? Spiritually, it's like, how can this person reach me on a level that can supersede politics? 
and you're asking, does that ever really happen? And you don't even need to ask because there is a literal example in front of us day by day when we look at this MAGA cult. See, politicians can sometimes build cult-like followings, and Donald Trump has done such. So you can't really reach them because it's not a political conversation anymore. With them, it is a spiritual conversation, right? It is spiritual. He speaks to them on a level. And when somebody truly feels like the candidate that they're voting for or that they support is ordained by the one that they believe in, whether it's God, whether it's source, whether it's universe, whether it's whatever, when they truly believe that that thing has ordained this individual, there is no changing that perspective. That's not a disconnect. That is a confirmation bias. That is them truly believing that no matter what, this is the right choice, no matter what that person does. Those kind of conversations are going to be futile. <clears throat> and I'm learning that as I'm going through this whole process of understanding how do we find a way to break through the disconnect. I'm understanding what are wasted efforts. I'm not saying they're wasted people. I'm saying when you have invested your soul into one individual to be your savior as a human being walking this earth, nobody can change that. And we don't even try to. But the last thing is the psychological component. Psychologically, how does this candidate make me feel? And that is a problem because we go so much into likability, electability. How does this person sit here and, and conduct themselves in a time of this? That Do we really care about that? I, I don't think we should. What I really want to know is, do you have a firm grasp on the issues that are at hand? Do you have actionable solutions, right? But psychologically, we have to like this person. Because we don't like the people who give us all the facts and they talk really fast and they're really, really boring and they're lame. We don't like those people, but those are the ones that we really need to be electing because to them, that is their job. They want to make it better. Remember that thing I talked about last week about, hey, maybe you stop fighting for me and you start working for me. Those are the kind of politicians that we need to be electing. When you see somebody who has really, truly done the research, and I'm not talking about the talking points. I'm not talking about debunk, uh, debunked. You know what I'm saying? Narratives. I'm talking about they are giving you the truth, the facts, the stats, the data, the research, the analytics, everything. And they are really, really prepared to take what you are telling them is your biggest issue and make it something that they are willing not to fight, but willing to work for on their agenda day in and day out to make sure something happens. That's how you need to vote for somebody. You do not need to be psychologically invested in, hey, I like this person. Hey, I don't like this person. Hey, they have a D. Hey, they have a R. Hey, they have an I. I can't vote for them. Psychologically, we have to get past that because even though politics aren't about politics, maybe, just maybe, if we got back to speaking about actual politics rather than how we feel about politics, we could get some shit done. I'm just saying.